Hello and welcome to Scale. Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what I'm going to do is show you even more footage that I captured from Scale, the Southern California Linux Expo. I arrived in LA actually before the event started. I'm here with Jay, Jay LaCroix from Learn Linux TV. Hello. And I have Andrew here from Linode as well. So the first day was just walking around and exploring the venue and also setting up the Linode booth. And at the booth, we were preparing to give away some really cool things, such as fidget frisbees, which I didn't even know was a thing until that day, nerd badges, as well as t-shirts. There's a ton of swag at the event for sure. And I actually ended up with quite a few stickers, which is really cool. Now, of course, being a geek, the first thing that I thought of when we got together at the booth for the very first time was to reenact a meme. Anyway, after we set up the booth, Gardner and I walked around a little bit more. And we also noticed that there was another cloud provider just across the hall. Small world. Another really popular thing at scale was the Steam Deck. Everybody either had one or was talking about it because there was a lot of passion when it comes to the Steam Deck. And I actually liked the device quite a bit. Mine arrived the day before, so the timing couldn't be better. It gave me something to do while I was on the plane and also during the evenings at the hotel room. Gardner also had one with him in addition, and we caught up with George Castro, who's been a friend of mine for a while. He had his Steam Deck with him. So there's definitely a lot of passion when it comes to the Steam Deck. There's also an individual from Lutris who was there at the event as well. And my understanding is that they're working on some integrations with the Steam Deck. That was pretty cool. And being the competitive gamer that I am, I bet you didn't know that. I actually challenged someone there at the Lutris booth to a game of Street Fighter Alpha 2. I noticed that he had Street Fighter Alpha 2 on his rig, which is one of my favorite games. So I decided to play that game and see if I was rusty or if I still had my skills. And I think I did okay. But the biggest thing when it comes to scale, at least for me, is the Linux community. And engaging with you guys, talking to you guys, that was a ton of fun. And one of those fun conversations that I had was with Drew, who was there representing OpenSUSE. I am here with Drew from OpenSUSE. How are you doing? Pretty good, and you? Doing pretty good as well. Um, OpenSUSE is actually a favorite distro on my channel. It's, it's one of the- uh, Love to hear at that. At least in the top five, if not closer to the top. I, one of these days, I probably should rank them and by interest in the channel, but definitely a lot of fans for sure. And Love it. So at the booth today, we have like, I'll be showing B-roll here very shortly, but it's actually a really awesome booth setup that you have here. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what you do for the project and uh, what you got going on these days. Uh, what I do for the project is sort of organize the presence here at the Southern California Linux Expo. Awesome. And um, I've been doing that for a while now. Um, and I'm just a general, uh, you know, community member uh, an advocate with the project and I, you know, encourage other people to use it and, and uh, sort of provide a helping hand uh, to them uh, as they might experience uh, the distribution and have questions uh, regardless of their technical background or, or whatever. Um, and so that's sort of what I do with the project. What sets it apart, uh, I'm a big fan, uh, though I don't personally use it myself that much anymore, uh, yes. Um, it's a great tool for people of all technical, you know, abilities to use, uh, to, to make modifications to the system in a way that is, uh, you know, just easy, off the cuff, yep. you know. Um, and that, I think, has a lot of power. Uh, I like that it doesn't, you know, talk down to users. Yep. It doesn't it doesn't expect you to be a complete idiot and keep you in the dark. It lets you do more advanced things easily. Yep. Um, and it sort of exposes some of that to you uh, in an accessible way, in my opinion. Yeah, um, I, I kind of feel like if you didn't mention Yast first, I'd have to walk away. <laughs> I'd say, sorry, but you're not the right person for this. <laughs> so I also, well met. Yeah, well yeah. Met, I sure. mean, I, I love Yast. Uh, and using it or don't use it, it doesn't really matter. You can jump back and forth. Yeah. And that's, that's the cool part to me, is like, if you use it, 
you can still be like, oh, I want to go back to the command line, do it there, see the difference in, in YAS, see the change you just made in YAS, change it there next time. It's whatever, it's your preference. Uh, yeah. And there's multiple user interfaces to that, whether you're in a terminal uh, setting, there's like a end curses sort of uh, interface as well as a uh, QT, uh, Qt interface. Yep. So it's, it's really powerful to have both options because you don't always, it might be on a server or something, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I also love Zipper. I'm a big fan of Zipper. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it, it feels very, um, it's very powerful. I love that it's got the CVE, uh, it, it's aware of like security um, CVEs built into the package management. The, the, the concept of vendors is built into the package management, so uh, it's much harder to sort of brick your system uh, with when it, when it has a sort of affinity for where it previously got that package from uh, before. So I think there's a lot of things uh, just with Zipper that I'm, I'm in love with. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the community is, in my opinion, second to none. A big, big, big community very multinational, very diverse. Uh, and then we we have like a really strong culture of building tools that sort of lower the barrier of, of entry for people to jump in and participate and contribute. That's amazing. Uh, you know, uh, open build service is one I, I love to point to and say, look, you want to start building a package for OpenSUSE, just go to uh, build.opensuse.org and start building your package. And, and you can do it not just for OpenSUSE, but for all the various Linux distributions that you want to support with that package. Absolutely. And, I love how in Yast you could be like, I want a hypervisor set up, hit the button, right. walk away. Right. Or like you're saying, you could do it manually. But I think one of the things to underscore that some people may not realize is how hard it is to synchronize a configuration tool mm -hmm. and config files if somebody does it manually. I have seen countless times that if you go on the command line, right. you disconnect everything from the config server, or excuse me, config service, mm -hmm. because, oh, you used your, you did it your way, so now the UI is broken and it doesn't match anymore. So right, right, right. Like, it's like this this keeps it all in easy. sync, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's very powerful to just go in there, do that, and, and let it do its thing, and then, oh, you have the thing working. Right. It's like, okay, why does it have to be so hard? Yeah, absolutely. And then it having doesn't. enterprise packages on the desktop as well is one of my favorite things personally. Right. Well, in 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 OpenSUSE, we don't just build a single distribution. Um, yeah. We've got Leap and Tumbleweed. Leap is really built on a SUSE Linux enterprise stable core with some community packages on top. Um, and that is, uh, you know, a regular release cadence. And uh, you can do all the, if you're, you're, you don't touch a machine that often, but you want to get those security patches, you want it to be a long-lived install, but you don't need the freshest packages at all times, that's a pretty great option to have. And then for, you know, if you, if you want to run something really current with the newest hardware support, the newest desktop environments, the, the newest tools at your disposal, there's Tumbleweed, and in either case, everything's being run through OpenQA, which is our QA process, so our community is not our QA. That's right? so powerful. They're just the, right? Yes. So everything is, we are automatically testing. We can't test all hardware, all scenarios. It's virtualized. We bring up each build virtually and we run through all of the tests make sure you know things work but uh, that attention to detail we built this tool uh, you know I didn't personally but the community yeah. built this tool uh, open QA to be able to really give us a something to uh, so this way our, our our community is not our first round of QA Right. Exactly. That's. I think there's. That's sometimes bantered about in, in the open source communities. Oh, like the community project is. That means you're the QA for for the 
for the thing. But that's not the case with OpenSUSE, right? That is, that is so amazing. And the fact that you've got your build service, I've had, I can't remember what it was, but I was downloading something for a tutorial for Debian, mm -hmm. and then the developer links to the OpenSUSE build service page, which has packages for the other distros. Right. You guys didn't have to do that. You could have easily said, this is for OpenSUSE, but other distros are there, and I feel like that's amazing, because I, I do feel other distros would not have enabled that. Yeah, well, I, I think that it comes back to the community again, uh, yeah. with the, this diverse community. Um, very large, multinational, you know, um, just multi-distro. There's so many people participating in all facets of, of backgrounds and, and um, you know, that there's bound to be distro hoppers in, yeah. in the group there and people who, who don't yeah. just like yeah. OpenSUSE, right? Uh, and so it's, it's a, uh, okay, we so want to be inclusive and we want to provide, uh, provide that to the broader and community because right all of there. us are Linux, you know, we're, all yeah. the Linux distros are Linux distros, right? So it's our collective community. And so just only making it for yeah, OpenSUSE, like if then, uh, we can make it for other things, we do. Fire. Like even we have, a, we have a tool called Kiwi, which builds images for, that's how we build our ISO images. So you can, in XML, you can define, um, you can define uh, your, um, uh, like your definition for what you want your image to have in it. You can put OBS mm -hmm. repos in there and specify the packages you want to include. You can make it as robust or as minimal as possible. And you can, using that same sort of specification, you can then run Kiwi and generate uh, an installable ISO, a Docker image, a, um, uh, a virtual box, hard disk, whatever, Right, and that doesn't just support OpenSUSE. There are other distributions that are maybe less well tested um, because they don't use it as, right. you know, we use it for all of our builds. So of course it works best with OpenSUSE, but there's an effort made to make it work with other distros. That's so, that's so generous. I feel like that's very generous and um, so this, this is all amazing. I'm even learning some new things here, and I've been using it and reviewing it and things for a while. Um, Kiwi, for example, I haven't actually used, but I think I know what I'm going to be doing when I get back to If you've ever used the old uh, Sousa Studio, I, I have, right? Yeah. That was a nice little web UI. You clicked all the boxes and you, you said what repos you wanted, and it was in the background simply generating that XML and doing uh, executing Kiwi for you. That's so amazing. So where would you uh, point people to for A, to, to just get started using the distro and B, get involved if they wanted to help develop it? Well, you know, we're, we've got IRC channels, of course, and uh, we've also got Discord channels and, um, you know, we're, we're in all the usual places and you can find those on uh, our, our website, opensusa.org. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know it's there's a lot going on, and we're we're in all of the places, and we try to be sort of in front of where people would be. So you know there's a yep. there's a YouTube channel, of course, an Open Sousa YouTube channel. Um, we've got a Facebook group, an Open Sousa Facebook group, and then of course we've got the SoCal Sousa Facebook group um, for anyone in the Southern California market. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, the, there's um, we're we're in all of the places, and we're doing cool stuff. We just came out with uh, Leap, uh, uh, was it 15.4? Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, there's always new builds of Tumbleweed uh, all the time. Yep. Um, and uh, there's even Micro OS Desktop, which is sort of a new thing. Um, Micro OS was originally sort of for container environments, and now. Uh, it's this, you know, we've expanded the scope of that project to also include desktop usage. So, uh, transactional updates, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, with your, with your OpenSUSE desktop. So it's, it's pretty cool stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on. 
um, plug in, you know, contribute to the wiki, contribute to working a booth, contribute to, uh, you know, documentation, translation, um, bug reporting, no matter your level of technical ability, whether it's artwork or ideas or slogans or whatever, jump in, find a place, uh, and the best place to start is just land on opensusa.org uh, and connect with people through our communication channels. That's what I have at a side note. Some of the YouTube videos I have seen from you guys are some of the best Linux YouTube videos I have ever seen. And being a YouTube a Linux YouTube channel myself, I mean, even I'm impressed. Especially, like, I was curious a while ago how to pronounce OpenSUSE. So, you know, of course, I landed on the video that you guys have, which is just a bunch of people over and over and over again. Um, yeah, yeah, it was such a great video. And, and yeah, right. The, the music uh, yeah, that the, you have done as well. The, the, so. And, and I think that it's important to remind people that there is a difference between SUSE and OpenSUSE. And uh, some of those that you just mentioned are some of the marketing videos that SUSE, the company, produces. Right. And they're, they're part of our community. So they're, they're still relevant to us, yep. right? But um, they're not just relevant to us. SUSE is a company, and they uh, participate in the community development of open SUSE distributions and the, the project um, that we have going on. So, you know, it's it's not just us. There's there's companies, there's there's individuals all over the place. And it's, yeah, I love those videos too. They're, they're so much fun. And I'm so glad that they, they put that level of personality because I feel like it is a nod from the corporation to the the fun part of open SUSE, right? The, the the sort of community collaboration. It's fun to build something cool with your friends. They don't like rigid corporations with dry personalities? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's probably some of those people in yeah. there too, yeah. right? But you know, it's uh, there, it's it's all over the place. There's there's yep. people of all sorts and it, it takes all sorts to make a community. And um, it's, it's fun to have that acknowledgement and representation of the like, the, the fun, aspect of doing this because it's not just it's not just the corporation participating in this right yeah. it's the community it's individuals having fun building something with their friends building a community together awesome well thank you so much for your time i really yeah, appreciate thank you. it this was fun awesome Can't you just tell the passion when he talks about OpenSUSE? I love that. There's nothing greater than when somebody is passionate about something that they're into, and Drew was clearly passionate. Anyway, I had a ton of fun at scale, like I've said probably a hundred times by now. It was such a great experience. And there's more footage where that came from. So make sure you're subscribed to Learn Linux TV, because I will have at least one more, probably a few more videos about scale coming very soon. So definitely subscribe, and I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.